Hello everyone. Today we'll be solving AQA GCSE Chemistry Question Paper, May 2018. This is higher tier paper one. Today we're going to be solving from question number one to question number three. Soluble salts are informed by reacting metal oxides with acid. Give one other type of substance that can react with an acid to form a soluble salt. So to react with an acid, we can react either metal, metal hydroxide, metal carbonate, or directly we can add a soluble metal hydroxide, which is an alkali. Calcium nitrate contains the ions Ca2 plus and NO3 minus. Give the formula of the calcium nitrate. So guys, in this case, we can see the calcium is 2 plus and the nitrate is only 1 minus. So we're going to write Ca, we're going to write the NO3 inside bracket. And what we're going to do is we're going to exchange the number for the charges. So the 2 goes to the nitrate, the 1 goes to the calcium. So Ca, NO3, 2. Describe a method to make pure dry crystals of magnesium sulfate from a metal oxide and dilute acid. So a question like this can be answered in this way. All right, guys, for this particular question, which has six marks, we have to write at least six points. I'm going to give you an answer that has more number of points. However, you know, we all forget few points during the exam. So if you go through the entire answer, you will be able to at least get your six marks and it will cover up uh, six points during your exam. So what we can do is we can use magnesium sulfate and sulfuric acid. So what we're going to do, we're going to add the sulfuric acid to a beaker and then we're going to warm the sulfuric acid. This is to give this um, sulfuric acid enough amount of energy, all right, uh, that it can, you know, overcome the activation energy barrier. All right, then we're going to add magnesium oxide to it and then we're going to stir both of this. And we will continue adding the magnesium oxide. Now, the main reason why we're continuously adding magnesium oxide is because magnesium oxide is insoluble. So if we add extra, we will ensure that all of the acids are reacted. However, we will not be, you know, we will not have any problem filtering out the excess magnesium oxide at the end of the reaction because remember, it's insoluble. All right. Then what you're going to do is we're going to filter that solution using a filter paper and a funnel to remove the excess magnesium oxide. Then we're going to heat the solution in an evaporating basin to its crystallization point. Once it reaches the crystallization point, what we're going to do is we're going to leave it, all right, to crystallize. We're going to leave it to cool down so that it can get the ample amount of time to crystallize. The main reason the solution is going to crystallize is because, you see, at lower temperature, water has less solubility of salts. So the, you know, salt will just simply crystallize. All right, great. And once the crystals are formed, we are going to decant the liquid off. We're going to pack to dry the crystals, all right, using a uh, dry filter paper. All right, and that's how we're going to get the pure crystals of pure dry crystals of magnesium sulfate.
This question is about metals and metal compounds. Iron pyrites is an ionic compound. Show the figure one shows the structure of iron pyrites. We can see there is one atom of iron with two atoms of sulfur. Determine the formula of iron pyrites. Since there is one atom of iron and two atoms of sulfur, so the formula should be Fe plus 2. An atom of iron is represented as Fe 5626. Give the number of proton, neutrons, and electrons in the form of in this atom of iron. So the number of protons will be 26. And since it is an atom, so definitely the number of electrons will also be 26. And the number of neutron will be 56 minus 26. Iron is a transition metal. Sodium is a group one metal. Give two differences between properties of iron and sodium. So, in terms of, you know, uh, transition metal and group one metal, we have to understand that when they ask two differences in properties of iron and sodium, so they are asking to compare. So what you're going to say, iron has higher melting point, all right, and higher boiling point, definitely. And iron is more denser, all right. Iron is harder because they want two differences between the properties of iron and sodium. So you can go for physical properties or we can talk about chemical properties. So the answer can be as follows. Guys, some more additional points which you can write and I'm writing these as chemical properties. Nickel is extracted from nickel oxide by the reduction with carbon. Explain why carbon can be used to extract nickel from nickel oxide. So basically, if we want to answer a question like this, we have to understand that nickel is lower in the reactivity series below carbon. All right. So carbon is more reactive than nickel. So carbon is able to displace the nickel from its oxide. All right. This will be the answer. An equation for the reaction is NiO plus C, Ni plus CO. So nickel oxide plus carbon, nickel plus carbon monoxide. Calculate the percentage atom economy for the reaction to produce nickel. Guys, when we are calculating percentage atom economy, so we will be putting the product, all right, percentage atom economy. We will be putting the product on top and the uh, total amount of reactant. At the bottom so the product here is actually nickel so the nickel has a mass of 59 and the reactants are nickel oxide which has a mass of 75 and uh, carbon which has a mass of 12 we're gonna put this into 100 percent so 100 equals to and this will give us the answer of 67.8 all right so this will give us the answer of 67.8 so this fulfills our answer to three significant figure. So we'll keep it as it is. Chemical reactions can produce electricity. Figure two shows the simple cell. Electrode A, electrode B, we can see electrolyte. Which of these combinations would not give a zero reading on the voltmeter in figure two? Okay. So it says that it would not give zero reading. If we are using the same electrode, it will give a zero reading. All right, because electrons were transferred, we will then basically not be able to tell. All right, if there is a copper and a zinc and we use sodium chloride solution, it's going to give us a voltage. However, if there is a copper and a zinc, but we use water, water is not a good conductor of electricity. All right, so it will not give us any voltage. Alkaline batteries are non rechargeable. Why do alkaline batteries eventually stop working? So basically, you know, alkaline batteries, they have reactants inside them, which is basically chemical energy that is getting converted into electrical energy. When the chemical runs out, then basically the battery cannot produce any more electrical charge.
why can alkaline batteries be not be recharged so all right why alkaline battery cannot be recharged all right the main reason is any particular reaction if it is not reversible then we will not be able to you know get the particular battery by giving it electricity back and reversing the chemical all right so since the reaction is not reversible that's why we cannot recharge it So guys, if a particular battery, all right, whatever the battery is made from, if it is rechargeable, that means that particular chemical reaction within itself, the chemical chemistry can be reversed by putting electricity in it and, you know, altering the state back into the reactant form. And then, all right, what happens is that when the reactants turn back into product again, it again it discharges the electricity, all right, which we can then use in a particular process. So a particular battery that is, you know, rechargeable is actually a particular, uh, it, co it contains a chemistry that is, uh, you know, reversible. Hydrogen fuel cells and rechargeable lithium ion batteries can be used to power electric cars. Complete the balance equation for the overall reaction in a hydrogen fuel cell. So hydrogen, when it reacts with oxygen, it produces water. So for example, for balancing this particular chemical equation, what we need to think of is that there is two oxygens in here. However, there is only one oxygen in here. So we multiply with the two in front of it. However, that causes this hydrogen to become two times two equals to four hydrogen. So we're gonna put a two over here, which multiplies two times two equals to four hydrogen. So that's how you balance the equation. Table 1 shows the data about the different ways to power electric cars. Alright guys, time taken for refuel, recharging minutes for hydrogen fuel cell is 5, rechargeable lithium ion battery takes 30 minutes to recharge. Rechargeable lithium battery has a, you know, uh, a limitation up to 240 miles where a hydrogen fuel cell can go much farther. Our rechargeable lithium ion batteries are right distance travel per, uh, you know, distance travel per unit of energy in kilometer is a little bit higher in terms of lithium battery. All right, cost for refueling is very low in lithium battery and minimum cost for the car in pounds is very low in terms of the 60,000 pound for hydrogen fuel cell car. Evaluate the use of hydrogen fuel cells compared with rechargeable lithium ion batteries to power electric car. Use table one uh, and your knowledge, okay, and your own knowledge. So basically, when we do the evaluation, first of all, we need to think from the table, what we are getting, we are getting as a drawback, the refueling time for hydrogen fuel cell is much lower, whereas a rechargeable battery is much higher. Okay, great. All right, we can also say that the fuel gives a, the hydrogen fuel gives a basically, you know, bigger range, whereas, you know, for rechargeable lithium ion battery, we're getting a very small range and we also need to charge more often. There is an added benefit to hydrogen fuel cell, it uses less amount of energy per kilometer whereas a rechargeable lithium ion uses more amount of energy per kilometer. And also thinking about the cost, you know, uh, lithium ion battery has an advantage, which is a, a, the cost of recharging is very low and the cost for, uh, you know, buying a car with lithium ion battery is also very low. So the answer can be written as follows.
so guys we're done with this particular video thank you for joining this particular lesson all right guys videos like this will be uploaded every day and you know subscribe to the channel so that you can get a notification when the videos are uploaded if you have any particular question paper in your mind that you want me to solve related to gcac chemistry chemistry biology and physics let me know guys i'm uh, you know currently staying in dubai uh, near uh, dib metro if you require tuition home tuitions or if you want to get a tuition over here at my place uh, you can let me know all right in the comments and ask for the email and i, I will definitely give it to you guys you know thank you for watching the video all right best of luck for your exam and see you in the next video bye bye